We're out here in my garage to check out a product that I don't normally review. Today we're checking out the Falcon 2 Pro Laser Cutter Engraver. I was a little surprised when Falcon reached out to me to check out the Falcon 2 Laser Cutter because my normal content is on gaming and streaming kind of tech. But if you didn't know, I'm actually a part-time woodworker, so this is actually up my alley and I've been interested in getting a laser cutter for a while. First off, as I said before, Falcon did send me out the laser cutter but isn't paying me for this video. I will have affiliate links in the description for all the products I'm using. If you'd like to check them out and help support the channel, all the links are there. Everything came very well packaged in the box and it all went together pretty easily. The frame and the gantry is all one piece, so you don't have to worry about assembling any motors or any difficult pieces. The only parts you are assembling is this top canopy part, and that took about maybe two hours. Now the major difference between the Falcon 2 and the Falcon 2 Pro is this top canopy part and all the features that come with it. The other small difference is this pull out drawer that can help collect all the small little bits that you cut out. It kind of keeps it all together so it's not making a big mess. So everything in the Falcon 2 Pro is enclosed because there's a small fan in the back corner that can help suck out all the dust so you're not breathing it all in. And the fan actually does a really good job for its size. The canopy has some great safety features that in my opinion are a must. As you can see all this red plastic. That red plastic plastic is there to block out all the harmful light from the laser. Basically it's there just to protect your eyes so you don't go blind. And the red plastic is all around the laser so you have a good 360 view of your workspace. And this sliding door has a safety feature too where it'll turn off the laser if you open this mid cut. If you look at these two lights here they'll change colors when you open up the door. Now this doesn't look very good for filming but you can actually use magnets to kind of fool it to make it think that it's closed. I don't recommend doing that but if you're going to if you need to film something Make sure you have some safety glasses nearby so you can use these instead. In the front of the machine, you have some very simple controls. You can jog the laser around if you want to kind of move it and fine tune where the laser starts. You have your home button so you can send the laser home so it kind of knows where it is. You have your frame button so you can make sure your project will be in frame and it'll actually fit in your wood. You have a really nice emergency stop button that'll turn off the entire machine if there's an emergency. And a really good feature is these keys. So if you have kids around, you can just take the key out and the machine won't turn on if there's no key inside. You can run the Falcon 2 Pro without a computer. Maybe you don't have a laptop or a computer inside your garage. You can use the simple controls and the pause and play button. If you plug an SD card into the Falcon 2 Pro and use the pause and play button, it'll run whatever file you're working on last. The Falcon 2 and the Falcon 2 Pro both come with air pumps for air assist. It's not built in, so it's its own separate pumps. You can choose to not use it if you want, but I highly recommend it because it makes your cuts cleaner. There is a dial on the side to control how much the air pumps out. Now this is a feature I haven't really tested yet, but there's actually a camera in the top of the canopy that can look down at your workpiece. Now the camera isn't meant for filming, like you're not gonna make a YouTube video of it cutting out your pieces, it's just not that good of a quality camera. But what it's meant to do is to see your workpiece, and if you're cutting out a whole bunch of small pieces, you can move them around to maximize your wood and get the most amount of pieces out of your wood. It can also help center your piece. If you're trying to get something square in the middle, it can help line things up for you. And now for the biggest negative I think this machine has. The Falcon 2 Pro uses these bars to hold up your work, and I'll show you why I think that's bad. I'm just not a fan of these, because if you work with really light wood like bass wood, it can wobble a lot and mess up your cuts. Now this was one of my test pieces. It's super thin, super light, and when the laser was moving around pretty quick, it was kind of wobbling around. And you can see that the words aren't very crisp. You can tell the wood was wobbling around a little bit and it didn't give a good etch. If you're gonna make one upgrade to this machine, I highly recommend getting one of these honeycomb grids. You can get one off the Falcon site, but I got mine off Amazon because I would get it the next day. I think this one cost me 60 Canadian, so not that bad of a price. You could probably find them cheaper too. And it comes with these little pegs you could push down into the honeycomb to hold down your wood. And one last really cool feature of the Falcon 2 Pro is it has a really nice light inside the machine so you can kind of see what you're working with. It does shine really bright inside so you can easily see your workpiece. The only issue is when the laser is near the front, it can kind of block the light sometimes so you might not be able to see past the laser. But let's finally talk about the laser itself. The Falcon 2 Pro has three different lasers. It's got a 20 watt, a 40 watt, and a 60 watt laser. The higher the wattage basically means the stronger the laser is. The higher 
higher the wattage, the thicker the material the laser can cut through. The model that I have is the 40 watt laser, which I think you can cut through half inch material, maybe half inch hardwood. Now this is just one of the things that I've made. I bought this design off Etsy because I'm just not that creative yet, but you can see all the fine detail that this laser can do and it's actually very impressive. And this is actually the first thing I made. I turned my logo into a coaster. And the really cool thing about laser cutters and etchers is you can burn the wood at different powers and different speeds. So you can get a different shade of burn and a different thickness of cut with your speeds and your powers. And one way you can find that out is by doing these test prints. So you want to be doing these test prints with every single type of wood that you'd be using because every wood is different and has different densities. These are already preset in light burn so all you have to do is kind of fine tune them a little bit and just press go. So not only wood but you can also etch glass, plastic, wood, styrofoam, cardboard and this is a coaster I made out of slate and I think it came out really good. So these are very fast projects that you can make and sell on Etsy. This maybe took maybe like 20 minutes to cut. Something you have to kind of watch out for when you're etching stone is you can actually melt the stone if you go too high of a power. Here's another test etch with the different speeds and powers and there's really no gradient with the stone it's kind of all the same shade but if you go too high of a power you can kind of see the stone melting a little bit. I have a piece of half an inch plywood and this should be able to cut all the way through but I've never tested it so I'm kind of curious. We're just going to use the material test feature in light burn because if it does burn all the way through the half inch plywood I want to see what power level will actually cut through. So doing the material test I wasn't able to get through the slowest it would go in the default setting was 600 millimeters but I did another test cut just doing a little box but at 250 millimeters at 100% power I was just able to get through so this is the starting cut right here and this is me puncturing through it just a little bit. Now I did come into a small issue which kind of transitions into the next safety feature is the laser module has a fire detection so if it detects a small fire or maybe the wood smoldering or smoking a little bit too much it'll just turn off and that's what it was doing here it was getting about halfway through the cut and it was detecting a fire which it wasn't a fire but there could have been if it kept going so it just turned off. There's also a detection if the lens is dirty right now it's green so it's perfectly fine but if it's yellow or red you might have to take it apart and clean it up a a little bit so it cuts properly. There's also two lights on top of the laser module, one for normal and one for precise. For precise it's at 20 watts and at normal it's at 40 watts so 100% power. If you're looking to make projects that kind of fit together smoothly you might want to use the precise setting. It won't be as strong so the laser line will be a little bit thinner. I appreciate you guys hanging out and watching the entire video. It really does mean a lot to me. If you guys do like this video make sure you leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Also if you guys are interested in checking out any of the products that I'm using everything will be linked in the description too it does help support the channel if you purchase any of the links